Welcome to ATB TV. I'm Darren Dance here with Peter Morgandy in the back of the Ute, Pete. Back of the Ute, new <laughs> just new got studio. to swing the camera around. We're at the Macca's studio <laughs> today. Had a uh, egg and bacon and a coffee eventually had, when they found me. Ham and cheese. I had to throw it in the bin because it was frozen in the middle. Yeah, it's Can't recommend it. No, Can't no. recommend it. I stick with the egg and bacon. Well, we had a pretty ordinary week, <coughs> Pete. Uh, I think there was about five runners, <laughs> and uh, I think they all got a story to tell. They made us look like ordinary tipsters, Darren. I think we did suggest soft each way. Oh, I think we said we were hoping in Adelaide yeah. and uh, yeah, well, Southern France was no chance. So. Anyway, where do you want to start? Well, we'll start with him because he ran last. Yes, well, that was a hard watch. Um, there was no speed in the race. Craig Williams just absolutely... Dictated. Stole it, made them look stupid. Boat race, Darren. Uh, went very slow. <laughs> All the other riders sat in behind him. They were running 13s, 14s, and 15s to the furlong. You could see halfway. Oh, you can see after a thousand metres, we're in big trouble if Oliver didn't peel out and go forward, which they were all too scared to do because of the headwind. And um, Craig Williams got away with murder. Just a total waste of time. Um, <coughs> bring that horse from Sydney to Melbourne and see that happen to me was just. Yeah. An indictment on racing, really, and an uh, indictment on those riders for no one having the guts to pull out and put some speed into it. Yeah, it's my horse. He was uh, impacted big time, but I don't think it would have mattered. I think anyone who had a horse in that race, apart from the winner, would be saying the same thing. Yeah, most trials go a lot quicker. So he will uh, come back to Flemington on the 6th of August. Yep. And uh, need to find uh, a rider that's uh, going to be prepared to take him on. Righto, we better get a, uh, a seat new it or something like that, Darren. A new it or a preble or yep. someone that wants bit, to have a bit crack. bit more adventurous, yes. Um, Morphinville, the, the sojourn over there wasn't quite what we... <coughs> I, I thought both horses, on face value, were disappointing, but that Morphinville's Park's track, for some reason, um, plays towards the leaders. Yep. And look, both were never really in the race, although Unassailable was up there. I know her form could be a little bit hit and miss a bit, but look, they didn't run up to expectations. I think Sea Princess was probably the better of the two. She just couldn't make ground from where she was. No, well, I thought. And it wasn't um, beaten far, you know. No, well, it, it was sort of wet over there, and uh, look, we did say last week that <coughs> both these mares are coming to the end of their career, and we're just trying to see if we could get some city form around them yeah. before we uh, move them on, but. Unassailable, I think um, the way she'd been working, the stable was really confident yeah. on Saturday morning that she'd run well, but she had blinkers on. She probably just over raced a tad, um, but when the pressure came on, uh, she put the white flag up pretty quick and was never in the finish. So she was disappointing. She'll stay there, give her the benefit of the doubt, and give her another go, yeah. and that'll probably be a final race. Sea Princess. Um, Look, I thought her run wasn't too bad. I, I think the mistake there was back to the 1300. I think she's better over 14 or 15. And you can see she was actually having a go, but she just needed more ground. Yeah. And uh, if we had to got another 200, she might have ran a place. Yeah. But there's no race for her over there now. So she's back in Warnable. We'll just find a country race for her and, and that'll be her done. Yeah, you're, um, you're right because the 1400 meter race and Cassin and she was towing Melissa into the race whereas she was not, you know, you, you use an energy to just stay with her but then you've got to try and pick up again, so. Yeah, Todd Panel said she was a little bit slow away yeah. and, and she was back in the back half and that's not where he wanted to be. Yep, yeah, she can win a, uh, the right country race because I yeah. think she's still in good form. Yeah. Uh, Monday at Warnable it was a heavy 150. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we had an Irishman. Um, he ran sixth uh, and I totally agree with what you said. Uh, there's one thing going to the lead and there's one thing, um, like Hunt was a 400 metre race, Hunt them to the lead and he's the kind of horse that races strongly without any urging and I think the kid had trouble sort of rating him after that. Look he gave a little <coughs> kick but you could tell on the turn that he was going to get run over by horses that probably got to the right part of the track as well. Yeah I find it hard to fathom how this works. I think in the, the owners will know in the pre-race I said to them, my biggest fear here is that, well, there was a short price favourite, Just yeah. Jono, in the race, which was clearly even money for a reason. Um, I think it did drift late, but it was always going to be up there. It just got beat. 
by Starbuck, mate, too. Yeah, yeah. like, and then I, my biggest concern was that we had an apprentice on, we drew one, we were always going to lead, and I was always petrified that he was going to stay on the fence, and they were going to run down the centre of the track, as they had been doing all day. But, I have to say, in his defence... He was lugging, wasn't he? The horse... Uh, was hanging into the inside severely, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he couldn't steer him out into the right lane. <coughs> but it looked pretty ordinary, and it was probably just a waste of a run. Yeah, the only thing you have is fitness. But uh, <laughs> you want to hope you lose a couple of points from it too to make it worthwhile. But yeah, yeah, but you can't just lead on these no. red tracks on the fences. It's just stupid. So anyway, Pat Ryan knows that. I think the jockey knows that, and I think we're going back to a senior. Yeah, probably. Take three kilos off, put 35 kilos on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes this probably... <clears throat> it, and it, I suppose he's in a tricky 64, benchmark 70 yeah. scenario. And I think the other thing was, Pete, there was just no riders there. Yeah. Like Jared Fry was probably the best rider there. Lindsay yeah. had him tied yeah. up all day. And there was just... It was, no one wanted to ride down there that day. Yeah. I think he said there was 20 people on track. Yeah. He got a treble too, Lindsay. Yeah. Us over. He's fine. Um, yeah, so that was their runners down. Yeah, that's it. So we'll move on quickly because we've got a massive week coming up. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got all day to One talk start. about. One <laughs> start. And it's a hurdler. Yep, First Shine start. and Dandy. Shine and Dandy. He's, uh, well, I think we spoke about it for a while now that eventually he might have a, a, uh, a go at the jumps. And, uh, well, no better track scenic wise than uh, Castanet to have your first jump race. I He's like handled his hurdle trials okay, but to go to a race day is another story. But uh, yeah, Look, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to Castanon. Um, I love that place. Um, those live edges, edges for yep. the steeples are, are just glorious to watch. Um, yeah, as you say, it's a lovely setting there. Um, yeah, so I, I intend to go Sunday and have a look. Um, I'm not going there with any great expectations. Um, the main other, than, other than I just want to have a look at the horse go over the jumps and, yep. and I, I don't know, there's, there's, I assume there's some steeple races there. Yeah, we've got two hurdles. He's in the maiden <clears> and then there's a oh, an open sort of hurdle. And then there's the, um, it's called the Morden Hill Steeple Chase, which is a $60,000 feature. And it's actually, it's a really good race. Alverson that's in that race of Wilds has gone for his third feature win there this year wow. over the fences. And yep. like, and this is where the prize money is good. He's won the previous two about sixty thousand dollar races. Another sixty. <coughs> he goes in against horses that have. He's been beaten by. Get this, twenty five links, and I think five. Although easy enough last up, but he's risen from sixty seven to seventy two, and I think he's got seventy four and a half kilos on Sunday. Jeez. So they're all getting a weight advantage on him. But his best uh, attribute is. He jumps to the front and bowls, and they're going to catch him. So it'll be a big spectacle, that steeple. So the owners of Sean and Dandy, you should go to Castle. Yep. Um, Chris McCarthy, I think, right? It is just a really, um, it's just a spectacle. And yep. the way it's sort of situated, you can get on that hill and look down in there. Yeah, yeah, on absolutely. Top of them. Um, and the club do a great job. And Mark Davis, the president, wants to catch you, Darren. He reckons you're a great uh, <laughs> advocate for Castleton because of what you just he's mentioned. In, he's in one of our horses, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's in Par Lager with oh, uh, sitting at a mine. Why didn't you put him in a good one? <laughs> they might let me in the gate, please. <laughs> Mark was wondering whether it was going to trial this week in <laughs> Castleton, but uh, I think it might Down be. Going to water, 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 no, Mark, we're looking forward to Castleton. We're a big supporter. Love the track. It's one of my favourite jumps tracks. Um, I've got it up there with Warnable <coughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to getting down there Sunday. It's a nice three hour, 15 minute drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, go. Liz was saying, oh, I don't know if I want to go. I said, listen, just get the thermos, fill it up with wine. <laughs> hey, a couple of nibblies on the way should keep you happy. I going. won't go Sunday. I've got to go Monday for the trials. Now, you Mark, just camp down at Mark's overnight. Mark will either be in a suit <coughs> or he'll be wearing shorts and a t-shirt. There's no way no, he'll be in shorts <laughs> and a t-shirt. <laughs> Anyway, we're looking forward to getting to Castard on Sunday. The jump season's almost over. Yeah, we're so if edit. we don't get down there and have a look at these live hedges, that's another year gone by. So get yep. to, look, if you haven't been to Castard and you need to go because it's a great day and um, yeah, it's just a spectacle. It's something you don't get to see. 
No, I agree. I agree. And they're probably going to have more jump racing next year because... Uh, well, it's strong, isn't it? This well, year Oak really Bank's strong. gold. Yep. And they reckon well, South Australia's gold. There could be a little mini carnival down the southwest or the west next yeah, year. Well, looking forward to that too, Pete. Well, that's our runner. Yes. Uh, so no bets this week? No bets? No. No bets. No just money watch, left. Just watch him. Yeah, no. No, no. no. no bets this week. No. So, look, we do have a heap of horses at trial stage and ready yeah. to kick off stage. I think... There's a couple going to Geelong next week, and uh, we've got horses coming up that unraced, um, all sorts. You can yeah. run through a list of them there, Well, Peter. Piranha, well, these have raced, obviously. Piranha, Quick and Dandy trialled at Burrowboot yesterday. They both go to Geelong next weekend. <laughs> but there's the likes of Supreme Thunder back again, Cracker Dance, Cutlun Race, Pale Lager, Samurai Star, Arthurian Princess with Wilds, Princess of Camelot, I don't know if she, yeah, she's, she's close. close. So there's a, going to be a oh, serious statement, which was uh, nominated for a couple of races uh, over the weekend. She's actually coming home. Is she? Yeah, oh. she's coming home. She's not ready. She showed a bit, though. No, she's a nice filly, but we've... Look, we could give her a start, but we elected to put her out. Yep. Choco Rock. He's ready. Uh, Anology. Sure. He's a way is. off. Yeah. And then Hasseltoff, who obviously changed his tables. Two Bay Shore. Yep. They're all coming up. So there's a group... Steinem's not far away. The, Yes, yeah, Steinem, and so, obviously detonated Jack's back And Sirius Suspect's going to run Flemington on the well, seat. Well, there's, there's a, um, I say too much, a little bit of a segue. Next week, Darren, we'll have our owner of the year and our one, two, three horse of the year. Well, the season, we've got 10 days left, so... Not much is going to change at either aspect, because no. we've only got one runner by the looks. Well, we think we know who the uh, horse of the year is, and we think we know who the owner of the year is. Yep. So we'll see if we're right. We'll, uh, We've had a guest, now Peter's got to do all the hard work. We'll, uh, we'll bring all that up next week. Well, um, what are we going to talk about now? That's it. Not <laughs> talking about football. <laughs> Did enjoy the uh, Carlton game too, against Too uh, good, Geelong. the Cats. Too good. But anyway, we'll just... Who's Carlton playing this week? TWS. Oh, oh, actually, I was quite happy because uh, they got beaten by Brisbane <laughs> and the coach berated all his senior players. They didn't like it. No, well, yeah. They sucked up. And, and he's dropped four of them, so <laughs> I'm happy. So we've dropped got, four of them. We've got a couple of players back, but anyway. Oh, well, I've got that's me, footy. My young fella's, my young, my oldest young fella, does it make sense? He's 26 on Sunday, and he's coming around home. He so goes, Dad, we're going to go to the footy, but I reckon we'll just come around and watch it at yours. I go, yeah, right. I said, can you buy a box of beer and put a roast on? <laughs> so I'm the chef and the barman oh, right, at home. Right. Oh, well, and I'll tell you, if Carlton is starting to get done by GWS, he's the first bloke out of the house. Is that right? Worst supporter ever. <laughs> I thought I was bad. He is shocking. Beck will, Beck will leave. She'll go. Really? Yeah. She kicked. Well, I've seen Liz go to bed half time a few games. Don't worry. I actually had to go to Beck to say, Josh wants to come around and watch the footy. She goes, who's on? <laughs> Carl playing. I go, yeah. She goes, well, he better behave. <laughs> uh, oh, dear, dear. He actually well, went down with a couple of friends last weekend. And Came home a quarter time. They were all teaching friends, like they all teach at the same school. And uh, Beck said, I hope it's not a boyfriend girlfriend situation. I go, why? He said, well, she'll leave straight away. <laughs> no, not, he's a bit rabid when it comes to following the Takes team. Takes it, see? Blames me. Big day tomorrow, Pete. A lot of good horses back. Yes, it's spring in the air. It Darren. is, isn't it? Pete. Left and the stakes. And, I was going to um, say, it feel like it's all right here, except for the breeze. Yeah, that's a cold wind. But yeah, no, good running, good racing. Yeah, so it's all starting to hot up. So, yeah, yep. once you get to August, yeah, that's it. So it's quick, yep. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up there. Have a great weekend. Stay warm. Get to Casterton. Wouldn't mind seeing a few ATB caps walking around down there. And, um, and Mark Davis will he'll buy you a beer. You yeah. Turn up. Yep. He will. I've got to drive. No, the others. The oh. so anyway, we look forward to getting down there. So have a great weekend and uh, we'll be back next week and we shall announce who was horse of the year and owner of the year. Mind you, half our clients are in Darwin for the carnival. Oh, how good would that be? They're all on the buses. Well, that's the other big thing, isn't it? Let's crank. Is it Palmerston Street Day tomorrow? Um. And then the cup. Monday week or no, uh, is that right? No, it's no, not. It's a week oh, after. Yeah, yeah. Week, oh, no, week they're all, they're all week jet early. All the Leonards, Dunstan will be at Ghost Town. They'll <laughs> all be up there and uh, Jared Burrow, all the Queensland mob will be up there. Maybe a couple of ATB horses going yes, around. Yes, right, now. your name's going around up there tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, and Damien Kelly from the Meredith. The you got up. The, yep, is he over at the pub? No, no, he's never there. 
He's uh, always away. So he's going up. So well, it's his birthday <coughs> or something. Wasn't it just uh, gone? was Wednesday night. Yeah, we it goes a... for a month though, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> we had a few beers with Damien on uh, Wednesday or Thursday right, night. Hey? Might have been Thursday night. Sixtieth. I couldn't have been Thursday night. It was yesterday. Wednesday night. It was his fifty-eighth. <laughs> Too many days at the pub by the sounds. I think um, Claire said he spent more days out of the pub than in the pub. <laughs> 58. Yep. Yeah, he's ahead of us then. He is? Old timer. Looks it too. Hey? Looks it too. What'd you say? Looks it too. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get back. Not your day, mate. Anyway, it was good to catch up with the boys there, Mick and Wombat and Damo and Claire. Yeah, they're all there. Jacko was there a couple of weeks ago. Jacko. Mark Jackson. Oh, oh was he? Yep. Jeez, that would have been entertaining. I can't believe how tall the bloke is. And the funniest arrow we've ever had in the pub, I reckon. Tall, uh, the biggest jawline ever. God, he's a big boy. Yeah. Um, and Warwick Kappa was there a couple of weeks ago. Geez. So Warwick Kappa... Um, Desperate for entertainers. Oh, they just turn up. <laughs> Warwick Kappa went to Bali and had a six-pack put in. Right, eh? Six-pack put in. <laughs> yeah. Did you know there was such a thing? <laughs> you well, can't make this up. <laughs> if it's ever going to happen to anyone, it's him. I actually watched his... So uh, you can go for dinner with Warwick Kappa. You can book him for dinner. Five grand. What? <laughs> That's true. I hope you go over with four. <laughs> you can't make this up. <laughs> Look, it's retro round in football this weekend in the <laughs> AFL, and part of it on that Fox footy, Mike Sheen, in the, the interview yeah. with Warren Kappa, he's a loose unit. <laughs> Some of the things he's done, like he went through a resume of his work, like. How tall do you reckon he is? Oh, he's probably 6'3". 6'5". 6'5", yeah. He's tall as. He could actually play footy. <laughs> he could. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> but I went through, like, he's been a ticket mate, or whatever you call it. <laughs> Meet a mate, Por yeah. Porn star, movie. <laughs> singing songs. Oh, and I played a bit of footy too, Mike, he said. <laughs> he was the first million dollar contracted player in the VFL, would have been then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, he got a six pack footy. <laughs> oh, you're going to love it. All right. right. <laughs> I've got a barrel. Can I change it to a six pack? Yeah. I think it costs about 25 grand. <laughs> oh, I don't know how they do it, but anyway. Oh, anyway, there's, uh, there's yeah. a little bit Just of uh, diversity, Darren. <laughs> we can cover any t subject here when we've got no I runners. think he's got a couple of. Just get back to the norm. He's got a couple of good. Reese Marston and a couple singing there on Sundays over the next four by at the Meredith. Oh, has he? Yeah, I'm just doing a few. A I few, think he's got a big show plates. there. A big show there for his birthday this weekend. But right unfortunately, on. I'll I'll be at Caston. Yeah, you will be. You might wish you were at the pub if, it, if it, the weather's not right. No, well, the weather's all right. We've got Sunday. a family uh, do on, um, so we can't <coughs> go Sunday anyway. But uh, we'll shoot off to Caston. Yep. Sunday morning. Anyway, have all a right. great weekend. Until next week on Darren Dance with Peter Morgandy.